So you're thinking about getting a sawmill and you're thinking about what are you going to have to do to do your first sawmill job? Well, as someone with several years of experience in doing this now, I have some advice that I want to offer you that is going to be life-saving for you as you approach your first couple sawmill jobs. So stay tuned and see what you need in order to pull off a successful job your very first time. The first thing that you're going to want to think about is this. And you say, what is this? This is just a blank sheet of paper. Well, that's right. Um, but one of the things that you're going to want to do is to fill this out yourself. And this is a disclosure and liability form. Okay. And so you'll want to see what kind of agreement you're comfortable having with your customers before you ever get on site. The one that I write for my business is basically a document which says that if I get hurt, it's on me. And if they get hurt while they're on the job, it's on them. And it lets them know that if they're walking around the mill, if they're hitting their shins or their legs on anything, or if the debarker, they somehow jump in front of that, they get injured, that that's on them, that's not on me. But I tell them at the same time, look, I'm watching out for you, and I've never had a single person get injured on a job. My liability form also covers my equipment. Even though I have insurance on my equipment, um, I still say, look, if that gets hurt, then that's going to be on me, that's on my insurance. However, I expect that if they have a tractor or something and they run a log over my mill and break something, that they're going to cover that. So all of that is in the liability form. Also, you want to say how much your cost is going to be right up front. You don't want any surprises. This is one of the reasons that I go by the hour. I don't charge by the board foot because the board foot guys are sneaky. And I can make another video about that another time. But complete and total transparency, especially in this day and age where it seems like everyone's trying to trick everybody, is so very important when you get on a job. So I say here's what the hourly charge is going to be so they know how long I'm there, what the bill is going to be. The only other expenses that I have is in blade cost. If I hit nails, bullets, metal straps, fencing, anything like that, all these things can be found inside logs. Then I expect them to cover the cost of the blade. And I say the cost of my blades are $30. Now, I use wood miser, double hard blades, seven or 10 degree blades. They range anywhere from 22 to about $25 a blade, but you can get three or four resharps out of every blade. And so I figure $30 is a fair and reasonable charge for losing a blade completely and it basically never being able to be used again. And so those are all my charges up front and I keep all of that in my liability form, which you need to fill out before you ever do your first job. Second thing that you wanna think about is this, and this is a very important one because it has to do with one of the primary pieces of equipment in your business. And that would be this, what kind of truck are you going to pull your sawmill with to the sawmill job? That's right, the truck that you use is very, very important. Now I think I finally found the best truck that you can have for pulling something like that, and that is a heavy duty flatbed truck. This one is an F450. My first wood miser I owned, I pulled it home from Indianapolis, and I got it used, and I pulled it back with a 2009 Dodge Dakota. <laughs> After that I realized I don't wanna be pulling this sawmill all around places with a Dodge Dakota. And so I stepped up and I got an F-250, which was a 7.3 turbo diesel. And that was a great truck for pulling it around. It was also 4x4 so I could get in many places. But one thing I realized is oftentimes I get customers who say, hey, can you bring some lumber home and get that dried for me? In those cases, the F-250 really couldn't haul the weight of the lumber and pull the sawmill. And so I realized I needed something a little heavier. Plus in the sawmill business, if you really start getting into it, you're going to realize that you have a need to move loads quite often. And so this has become a great truck for me. Um, and so the truck that you use is very important. However, chances are, if you've decided to purchase a sawmill, you probably already have a truck. And that half ton that you got, your F-150 or your, your Silverado 1500 or whatever your preferred brand is, um, that truck is gonna do just fine for you to start, but you're probably gonna find yourself um, going to your honey there at home and saying, I want now a bigger truck. And so just be prepared for that. Let's get into some of the basic tools that you're gonna need for your first job. I'll show you what I bring and what I've learned after several years. So for me, I have a basic tool bag that is full of tools. I have drills, I have drill bits, I have chisels, especially tape measures, of course. You need a tape measure, obviously. But one of the things that I have in here that has always been helpful is a light. And I have several different kinds of these lights that all run off of, I have DeWalt in this case, which it doesn't matter. Um, but I have 20 volt, you know, uh, interchangeability. And so all of that runs off of the same system. You're going to want yourself some kind of a tool bag, a basic tool bag, 
because there are things that you will run into that you can't ever imagine running into. Like if you end up hitting a piece of metal in wood and it's easy enough that you can just chisel it out and keep cutting, you're going to want some basic chisels and hammers and things like that. And you also might want a drill to drill around and, and things like that. Just a basic tool bag like I have here is going to be very, very helpful for you on your first job. I also have a big tool kit. You can tell my preference right now as far as uh, brands go. But this is my socket set. Metric, standard, everything. It's not just for the sawmill. What if your truck breaks down along the way? You're going to need something to work on that. And so you always carry a tool kit with you on your first job. Here is a little container that I keep. It's just like an old milk container, I guess you'd call it. And these are what I call my absolute necessities that I need for a job. First thing you'll see, any wood miser is going to run off of this stuff automatic transmission fluid and you're going to need a bunch of it so i usually bring at least one of these with me to a job if not two i keep some pv blaster on hand you never know when you're going to need to lubricate something else transmission fluid is pretty much the go-to though for most anything at least on a wood miser sawmill um, you keep i don't know how you guys will choose to um, run your lubrication system but this right here the dawn dish soap is one of the best things or comparable type dish soap um, so that you can mix your water. If you're doing a big job, you're going to run out of water about halfway through your job um, or maybe closer to the end of the day and you're going to need to refill that. And so instead of bringing a whole other thing of water, normally where you're at, and I asked this ahead of time, but the customer will have water on hand. You can just refill and put some of that in. Also, there's one more thing in here that I got to set this down to show you that is very important or at least it has been a time or two. You are going to want some kind of a pry tool, a big old hammer, and some wedges. All right. Now, different people carry things like this. I get mine from a professional forestry place, and uh, they work great. Why would you need this? Well, it's not for splitting trees, believe it or not, although you can certainly buy ones that will help you with that. The reason that I use these is if you get into a cut and suppose you hit metal or somehow you get pinched or you get halfway through a cut, you realize, oops, that cut was too big and now I gotta back it out. These things will help you because your blade will get pinched and you won't be able to back it out. If you can back the blade out without having to take it out of the machine and do all of that, it saves you lots of time. And so this is one of the most important things that you can have, especially as a new sawmill guy. And so definitely get yourself a couple of these and a big hammer and, uh, some kind of pry bar to help you with that. And not only do you want a pry bar, but you're also going to want a big crowbar. <laughs> this will come in handy in more ways than you can imagine. Don't ask, just get one. You need a big crowbar and don't be cheap on it. Get a good one that is not going to bend or break. I've had this one for at least four years and I still have been un unable to bend it. The next thing you're going to absolutely need and everything to go with it is a big chainsaw. Normally I will take two chainsaws with me. I have my big one. This is a Husqvarna 372 XP. This is not the biggest one they make, but it's uh, definitely big enough to do 99% of what you're going to run into a, in a job. And then I also have a 455 that I take with me. And between those two saws, one is more of a trimming saw set up with a 16 inch blade. This is set up with a 24 inch blade currently. Uh, I apologize for calling them blades. I know that just irritates some of you crazy. Chains chainsaw chains okay are you happy all right and along with that you're going to need yourself some uh, lube for your chainsaw and some mixed gas for your chainsaw as well and this should go without saying i would think but you'd be surprised i have went to jobs and completely forgot about this you will need an extra five gallon container of fuel whether it be diesel or gas whatever your machine runs on because you know you will get approximately i would say maybe six to seven hours of runtime out of a five gallon tank of fuel. But if you're out there all day, that's not enough and you can't assume that it's gonna stretch. And so you wanna bring more. And for me, it's pretty handy because right now, everything that I have runs off of diesel fuel. And so if I bring this with me, even if my truck runs out of gas, <laughs> hopefully it gives me a better shot at getting home. Well, one thing that I've noticed on my channel is that I have what I call a lot of safety Nazis on my channel. And you know what? I love you guys. I'm glad that you're watching out for me. And one of my videos, don't tell my wife how I did this. I can't tell you how many comments I got about you should have ear protection. And folks, I've said this again and again in my videos, 
but I do wear ear protection. It's these. They're earplugs, okay? I don't like to wear big earmuffs. I prefer earplugs. They're easier on my ears. I think they block more noise than most of the over-the-ear ones, and I don't get dust all around my head when I'm sawing either. I, you're also going to need, obviously, a pair of glasses. Normally I'm working during the day, and so sunglasses are the main thing. Um, but these work. And then, I actually have two pairs of gloves. I have a pair of thick hide gloves for handling sawmill blades or anything super sharp. And then I have a lighter pair of mechanics type gloves, medium duty, light duty gloves. Why is this the case? Well, these are great, but you know, when you're running the sawmill, mine has a power feed on it and all sorts of switches and buttons. And I don't have tiny hands to begin with. And so I tend to lose some of my fine motor control when I have big thick gloves like this on. And these really help me when I'm operating the sawmill and just have to push something off occasionally. But if I end up, you know, changing out a blade or I know I'm going to be moving a whole lot of heavy, thick, rough sawn wood, then I'll start with these gloves. <laughs> and I can already hear uh, what some of the old timers on my channel are going to be saying about that. Well, you don't need gloves if you really uh, are a real sawmill guy, you know, if you're a real woodworker. And you know what, I understand that because my hands are like leather. Anyone that shakes my hands will know that. I, I have the traditional uh, vice grip when I can shake hands. But at the same time, I've also learned, look, when you're working all day and you're handling rough wood, because it's in the green and it feels wet, it might feel soft. But then the next day you realize, no, that was rough hardwood that I was carrying. And you can end up abrading your hands pretty badly and getting splinters and things like that. And I know that maybe you think it's the manly man thing to do is to like have a bunch of splinters. Um, but I prefer not to be continually irritated throughout the week because I was stupid and decided not to wear gloves. And so obviously I'm not telling you guys what to do, but two pairs is what I bring. And that's what really helps me on a job when I'm working throughout the day. Now, as you're making sawdust, your machine is gonna get dust all over it. Even if you have a dust chute where the dust is supposed to go on the side, probably 85, 90% of that dust is going to go on the side, but you're going to get a bunch on the mill itself and you're going to need that to clean that off every now and then. And so that's when you're going to need one of these. And that is a blower for your sawmill. This thing is a lifesaver. You know, I used to bring a broom with me and I would just brush everything off like, you know, every half hour or so I'd brush some dust off of the mill. And then one day, uh, this guy came out of his garage, and he had a blower with him, and he just started blowing off my sawmill for me. <laughs> and I thought, how come I have not thought of that? You know, this was probably after I'd done about 30 portable jobs, and I had never thought to use that. And so, one of these is very handy. You can usually pick one of them up for about $150 at most places, and it doesn't need to be like, you know, a tornado uh, force or hurricane force blower. It just needs to be a normal old blower and it'll blow the dust off the mill. And so one of these is very, very handy. And now I never go on a job site without it. One of the things you're going to want to think about is staying hydrated throughout the day. And so I always bring a water bottle and I bring not only this, but I have like a big uh, three gallon one that I'll bring with me. I'll fill that up and then I can drink all day from that. And so I'll, I'll either bring that or I'll bring Gatorade, uh, stuff like that that can help replenish me throughout the day. And a lot of times you end up in new home construction and there might not be anything around. And so you need to think about those things throughout the day. And when I work, I don't stop. I might take a 20 minute or half hour lunch break, but that's it. Other than that, I'm working. And so staying hydrated is very, very important throughout the day. I know, again, this seems like common sense things. Hydration. All right, now I need to address what is one of the most important things on a job site. No sarcasm here at all. And I really mean that. This is not sarcastic, okay? And this is, how are you going to move logs around on the job site? So ideally, you've already communicated with the customer at least three to five times, if not a dozen times before you ever get out to the job. And you have clearly communicated that the logs need to be in order in a place where they can just be rolled onto the mill. Since I have hydraulics, that's what I work with. And that's what I recommend you get too, if you can afford it. First thing is moving the logs. Trust me, folks, unless you have like the best customer ever, they're never going to be exactly where they need to be. And even if they are there, you're going to have to pull them a couple feet this way, a couple feet that way. And so you're going to have to figure out how to move those. So here's what I got. I got my big truck and then you get 
a couple of these deals here tractor supply in my local area has them and some kind of a toe strap now i used to use chains but i'll tell you i really prefer these kinds of straps now because they don't pull nearly as hard in the truck there's more give to them um, and i find that they are just as strong if not stronger than the chains are most of the time and you're pretty much never going to come across a log if you get a good strap that is ever going to break your strap and so this is one of the first things you're going to think about and these work great to just pull things around the yard if you have the space to do it but there is one tool that will save your back and save your life on a sawmill job let me show you what that is as you see here this is a log right buck arch now i could say a lot about this little piece of welded equipment behind me here but i'm going to spare you a little bit of time on that because i've already made a video um, at least a couple years ago doing a review of that particular arch and i can tell you it has been a dream on the job site number one you won't tear up the customer's yard nearly as much with that thing number two because of the work of leverage and it being on wheels, it makes it a lot easier to move them around. A couple guys can move some pretty good sized logs with one of those things without any equipment. Number three, they're very adaptable. You can hook them up to trucks, four wheelers, side by sides, you name it. And believe me, most of the people that you're gonna go do jobs for, at least a good percentage of them, may not have tractors or skid steers or things like that. And so when, when it comes to moving stuff around, it's a very important tool to have. It's going to run you a little over a thousand bucks, but it's going to pay for itself fast in time and labor uh, very soon after you start using it. If you have a log arch, then you already have these. But if you don't have a log arch, you are going to need these. And this is skidding tongs. Sure, you can wrap logs with chains or you can wrap them with rope or whatever else. But this has been the gold standard of log moving equipment for centuries and it will not do you wrong. This one hooks up to my log arch, and so it's got this bracket that fits in the top of the arch, but it's also got this big metal ring that I can hook up anything to. And these things are essential on a job site when you start pulling logs around. And so I think you can buy these directly from Logrite, and I'm sure there's other suppliers. Your local timber place might have one of these. Um, but spend good money on these. The cheap ones break, the cheap ones aren't sharp, and the cheap ones aren't designed to dig into the log the same way. So make, you, make sure you get yourself a good pair of these. And remember, your sawmill, if it's a wood miser, can only handle logs up to 36 inches. So you don't need something that can grab a 48 inch log. Speaking of moving logs, there is yet another thing that you're gonna want. And this is something that I get asked often by customers. Do you have something that you can roll the log with to get it on the mill while you're here? Now, why do they ask that question? <laughs> Well, my guess is, is because they have rolled these logs or they've tried to roll these logs by hand or by foot. And I've realized that it is almost impossible to move something even though it appears to be round. And so you're going to need something very, very critical and something that any sawmiller has to have. And that is one of these, often referred to as a cant hook, or if it were straight here, it would be called a PV. And it is simple leverage, folks. This part digs into the log, and then you grab it, and once it's grabbed, you can easily use the force of leverage to rotate it. And the only thing better than one of these is two. And so what I have, if you can see here, put them down at my waist. This is a longer one. I believe this is 60 inches, and I believe that this is 48. And these also are from Logrite, and no, I do not get paid by them. I've never received a dime. Like many people, I just enjoy the product, and so I think it's worth promoting good companies. They also make a shorter version of this that is only about that long. And the reason the shorter ones are helpful is because oftentimes when you get on a log and it starts to get really small, the hydraulics on your mill may take longer to rotate that than what simply going up and just moving it by hand will do. And so cant hooks are very, very important. They are a necessity. Here's a couple more last second things that you might want to think about before you get to your first job. You're probably going to want, if you don't have fine adjust outriggers, you're gonna want a jack to jack up your sawmill and get it level. You need a level sawmill. <laughs> but a level sawmill is what you need to have to run a good job. Along with that, you're gonna want wooden blocking to put under the feet of the outriggers and under your jack. At least where I live, 
the ground is almost always soft and so you're always dealing with those situations so you want some wood blocking the other thing you're going to want to think about as far as that goes is just a basic shovel um, you're going to find yourself in situations where the ground isn't entirely level and you're going to need to dig out some areas and again all of this is communicated uh, before time with the customers and so in my disclosure agreement it already says that they're going to keep the wood scraps and they're going to keep the sawdust and they'll have to figure out what to do with that um, and that I may be digging some holes in their yard and so they're all fully aware of this and these are things that are necessary you know if if, if your log loading arms aren't all the way down on the ground and you have to roll these big heavy logs over something that is that high off the ground you know like your legs don't come all the way down that becomes a real problem to get them on there and so being able to dig out a little bit here and there to get everything how it needs to be is very very important and oftentimes just a simple shovel will be all that you need to do that so let me think if there's anything else that you'll want to think about there's a difference between rural suburban and city milling um, if you are taking your job into the city or even into most suburban neighborhoods they're not going to want a big pile of sawdust shavings in the middle of their beautiful manicured lawn. Granted, you've already told them, hey, I'm bringing a big truck, I'm bringing a sawmill, it's going to make marks, and they expect that. But one of the things you want to think about is perhaps bringing a big long tarp to put where the sawmill pile shavings will be coming off of the mill. There's not very much you can do about underneath the mill. You could tarp all that off too if you want to be really clean. But the primary problem is the big bulk of shavings that you're going to end up with at the end of the day. If you're milling just a couple logs on site, which is usually the case in a city environment because, you know, it's uh, the tree that was in the backyard that's going to be full of nails <laughs> that uh, you're going out to mill. It's going to cost them a zillion dollars in blades. If you're just doing that kind of a job, then it's relatively easy to move the tarp around at the end of the day and put the shavings somewhere in the yard. Um, but if you're cutting like 10 trees, you'd be amazed how much weight there is just in wood shavings. And so you may want to think about cleanliness when you're on the job site and what you're going to have to do that way. The other thing you're going to want to think about, and this is a very, very important one for me, is the professionalism of the job you're going to do. Look, I, I don't mean to be demeaning to anybody, but there's a lot of unprofessionalism in these kinds of trades. Now, don't hear me wrong. I also think that some of the nicest people that you will ever meet in your life are in these trades. But at the same time, a lot of times you get guys that are just shooting from the hip. Um, they don't know how to clearly communicate or express expectations. Um, they are not at the job site when they say they will be at the job site. Or they'll make appointments and then at the last minute cancel them for various reasons. Okay, But professionalism is such a big deal. And at least for me in my business, this is what I believe has set me apart from a lot of the other guys. I was on a job site just a couple weeks ago. And the customer told me that he had another sawmill guy out a couple weeks before me. And within five minutes of this first sawmill guy being there, he told them, get off my yard. With more expletives is what he informed me. But he said, get off my yard. I don't want you here. And why was that? Because this person did not know how to properly communicate to the customer the expectations of the job during that day. And so I had already communicated with this individual several times in the past before I ever got out there. And then once I got out there, I gave him a realistic expectation of what kind of workload we could do during that day. And guess what? We got it all done. And even I was surprised <laughs> that we got it all done. And so clearly communicating expectations and having a level of professionalism is so very important. And quite frankly, it's becoming more and more uncommon in the world today, where people are becoming more and more casual and quite honestly, more and more vulgar in their dealings with other people. And so that's really a biggie. I would say 95% of the jobs that I get, it is because I'm reliable, I clearly communicate, I am there when I say I'm going to be there, and I do what I say I am going to do. And those very simple and basic things, I think, are what will help you on your first sawmill job. I have never had a single customer, at the end of the day, be unsatisfied with what they ended up with. And so for that, I'm very thankful. I have had some people that have been more difficult to deal with, <laughs> but never unsatisfied. And so just like any other business, you need to watch your P's and Q's, but it is very, very rewarding. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you as you consider doing your first sawmill job. And I'm also interested to hear, like I said, from some of you uh, guys who have been doing this for a while and have done a lot of portable work, 
Is there anything that I've missed on here that you would bring with you? Perhaps you could help me out. Well guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please go ahead and consider subscribing and hit the like button for this video if you have enjoyed it. And hit that bell, of course, if you want to be notified of all the future videos that are going to be coming out. Guys, I thank you for watching. God bless you. Have a good day.